General Soleimani. He has been to the Middle East probably more than any other uh, uh, active official. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham joins us now. He's uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he doesn't need notes to know what Soleimani has done to Americans in the past. Uh, sir, first off, Senator, how significant is this move, and what has Soleimani done, Soleimani done in the past to Americans that you've seen? Well, he's killed, I mean, the, the cone-shaped IEDs that killed over 600 Americans came from, uh, came from Iran. Uh, how significant is this? Uh, we killed the most powerful man in Iran short of the Ayatollah. Uh, he was the right fist of the Ayatollah, and we took the Ayatollah's arm off. Um, but here's, this is not an act of revenge for what he'd done in the past. This was a preemptive defensive strike planned to take out the organizer of attacks yet to come. The intelligence was very strong that Soleimani was orchestrating chaos in Iraq at our expense and throughout the region. The president was informed of these potential attacks and he uh, acted. This was a defensive strike to neutralize future attacks that were, be plan that were being planned and executed by Soleimani and the popular mobilization front the Shiite militias in Iraq. All right. So, Senator, it was preemptive because bad things were coming, uh, the American government believed. Uh, the worry now is the retaliation because the Iranians have uh, pledged a crushing response. You say if they mess around with this next stop, their oil fields, right? Well, what I'm trying to do is create deterrence. So this was a preemptive attack to let everybody in the world know from North Korea just anybody else, that if you come after Americans on President Trump's watch, you do so at your peril. All the things that Soleimani had done in the past were real, but he's not dead today because of what he did in the past. He's dead today because he miscalculated what President Trump would do regarding future attacks. So what are they thinking about in Tehran right now? Revenge. What are they thinking about inside Iraq? All of these Shiite militias are going to have three days of mourning. What kind of command and control do they have regarding Tehran? Mm -hmm. Who makes the decisions to strike? And what kind of dis the strikes are they uh, contemplating? How would you stop retaliation through deterrence? What's the one thing that the regime can't afford to lose? Oil. The ability to refine oil. Yeah. So what President Trump has done is up the ante as high as you can up it. He's killed the most consequential military leader in Iran. He's killed the, the guy who's spreading terror throughout the world. When you say that Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism, the question is who leads that effort? It was Soleimani. They will not let this go unanswered. Yes, so Senator, here's what President, Senator yeah. have you spoken to the president? Is this what he's thinking or is this what you're thinking? Well, this is what I'm thinking. I, I, I was briefed about the, the potential operation when I was down in Florida. I appreciate being brought into the orbit. I really appreciate President Trump letting the world know you cannot kill an American without impunity. We will stand up for our people, and that is an absolutely essential message. But now, what will change Iran's calculation? How we respond? They're going to come after us with a vengeance if we do not reset the table pretty quickly. And if I were the president, I would put on the table targets in Iran, not Iraq and Syria, economic targets that would crush the economy. The maximum pressure campaign has worked. What would take it to the next level would be destroy the ability of the Iranians uh, to refine oil and, uh, and sell it. The oil refineries are the last thing they have in terms of an economy. Senator Nancy Pelosi, she said that tonight's airstrike risks provoking further dangerous escalation of violence. America and the world cannot afford to have tensions escalate to the point of no return. Ilhan Omar is saying that uh, this was a, a conspiracy theory that the president just wants distraction from the impeachment trial. And then Adam Schiff says the world is better off without Soleimani, but Congress didn't authorize the attack. What's your response? Do you think Congress should have well, made the decision or the president should have consulted Congress? The last group of people you want to talk to about this is 
Democrats in Congress, <laughs> Republicans in Congress, okay? As to Omar, this is not a distraction. What President Trump did is save thousands or hundreds of American lives and our allies. The attacks that they were planning against American interests were, were real. The rocketing of the compound killing the contractor <clears throat> was foreshadowing of what was to come. To all those Democrats who are criticizing the president, I was aware of what his options were. They were about to unleash holy hell on our people in Iraq and throughout the region, and the president decisively took action. Now, how do you prevent this from really going bad? You've got to put on the table quickly, in my view, the consequences of retaliation by the Iranians. they got to know what comes next. We took out the, the number one military mind of Iran. Okay, the next thing we need to put on the table is the number one economic engine of Iran is the oil refineries. The president has to convince the Ayatollah that if he retaliates, our response will be greater than the market will bear. Senator, uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, uh, George Bush and uh, Barack Obama had shots at him. Did they make a mistake not taking those shots? Well, see, this is always complicated. When the president brought it up to me, I was, I was taken back because the popular mobilization front, there are thousands of people in Iraq being armed by Iranians. These Shiite militias are the ones that attacked our embassy. I'm worried about the stability of the Iraqi government today. I have no idea how they're going to respond. Soleimani was killed in Baghdad. He was in Baghdad. He was killed on Iraqi soil. But the reason the action was taken is that he was planning and about to operationalize further attacks against Americans. I hope our Iraqi allies understand that we're not going to allow our soldiers to be attacked by outside interests like Soleimani, uh, and people are going to pay a price if you come mm -hmm. after an American, even in Iraq. So we need them to reject the Soleimani model and embrace the fact that our, our troops are going to be protected. They need to help us to protect our troops. I'm looking to the Iraqis to up their game when it comes to helping us protect America. But Iran put these lawmakers in place. They're going to vote to some, expel us. Some. Okay, so this is uh, the, the Kurds have no love for the Iranians. The Sunni uh, uh, Iraqis have no love. You got Shiite Iraqis. Some of them spent time in Iran during the war. They hated Saddam, but they're mostly Shiite nationalists. They're Iraqi nationalists. They have ties to the to the Ayatollah, but there's an element inside of Iraq that are completely wedded to the Quds Force, and those are the ones I worry about. But the overwhelming opinion of Iraqis is they don't want Iran to run Iraq. I would think not. And uh, now it's going to be a it's going to be a time of testing of the Iraqi political system and their military system. They've got to choose between the Ayatollah and us. Yep, it's uh, quite a choice. Uh, Senator, thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Lindsey Graham, good job.